but I have posted a few times. So Shanina Rasool, I'm a business consultant working with startups and scaling businesses, providing a tailored consultancy service. So very much working with you to understand where you need support and then providing that support. And um, I do a lot of a lot of work around developing a business idea, getting it launched, and then also then with the operations as well. So once you're running, how to kind of how best to run the business behind the scenes. Um, and then alongside that, I have two food businesses. One is um, a frozen meal business. And I recently, earlier this year, opened up a specialist food store. So focusing in on all halal food products, um, but a, a view at finding small independent businesses that are producing them. So there's a quality, there's taste, etc. as well. Um, so yeah, so this is a little bit about me. I'll hand over to you in a moment, but I just wanted to kind of give a bit bit of a background on why I then put the call out to yourself to let's do this conversation mm, and have this mm. conversation. So I put a post up maybe about a month ago, possibly, mm, um, mm. around the fact that, you know, as as a woman, um, you know, we're, we're obviously doing a lot generally and running a mm. business, etc. But I feel like as a woman, we do we have the additional challenges of our hormones. And the reason why I brought this up, and I'll have to bring up the post you remember what I specifically said, but the reason why I brought it was because I actually had, I've had like two months of mm -hmm. where my hormones were really playing up. Now mm -hmm. I'm one, I'm somebody who's actually generally been quite, it's been quite steady in the sense mm -hmm. of, I know, I know what moods I'm going to be in. I know mm -hmm. I'm going to be tired. I know I'm going to be like irrational. I know I'm going to be like touchy. Mm -hmm. um, and I, And I know sort of when that, when that's coming and etc so I've always been quite balanced with them being able to control mm. it but obviously not everybody has the same but then mm. there's times in people's lives and our lives where this that changes and I went through a two-month period where my hormones hormones were playing up and I don't know what the cause was obviously mm. you know maybe stress it may be emotional whatever it might be and that's maybe something you can provide some insight on mm. and at first I hadn't quite realized it was hormones playing up. All I felt was I was being very harsh on myself. I was being very mm. like uh, pessimistic and I'm very far from pessimistic. I'm quite the opposite. Um, and I was just like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why I'm doing this. I should just give up. To the point I genuinely sat down and questioned myself that should I continue with my business? Um, and being quite emotional and finding myself being more stressed than normal and stuff. And it was... I kind of went through, went through. I what I did do was I'm able to regulate myself in the sense of not to make the rash decisions. So even if I felt like for that moment in time that no, I'm going to give up, I didn't do anything about it. I let it sit until, you know, I kind of had another moment where things were a bit calmer and, and rethought and stuff. But it just got me thinking, like, what I need to do something, or what can be done in order to manage those hormones so they you know when they are starting to play up I think there's things like trying to recognize that it is hormonal and it's not you not being able to do anything it's not your incapabilities but it's your hormones playing up but then how how can you manage them how can you get them to be steady and then recognizing it and then obviously between the two of us we can share some tips on like what to do things like that what I said where you regulate yourself kind of don't make crash decisions so it would really, it really kind of just that I know there were some comments back and forth and you know there are some people who are able to manage it very well mm -hmm. um, or they know what's coming up mm -hmm. and they know mm -hmm. it is and stuff yeah. but um, I'm sure there's plenty of us who have these phases that have periods when it is or have times when it's a little bit difficult mm -hmm. um, and I just wanted us to talk about it and I think we should and I know that's one thing I'll let you do your intro, but I know it's one thing you're very keen on as well to kind of not only this, but other areas of, of female health to really bring that to light and let's be honest about it. Um, so uh, just yeah, you have, you have sort of asked me so many things and I hope I remember there's so many things you brought up Shahina and uh, I mean, really, I hope I don't have a verbal diarrhea because, you know, it's one of, it's one, it's one of my favorite topics to talk about hormones. So, yeah, if I go too off tangentially, just bring me back. But yes, so a short introduction. I mean, I've come on live a few times in the group, but for those of you who are new on the group or haven't seen me, my name is Dr. Nikita Islam. Um, I'm an obstetrician and gynecologist. I worked for nearly 20 odd years before giving up clinical practice in 2020, uh, which was because of my own health reasons and some personal issues that I was having. So I had to make a very difficult decision 
of giving up clinical practice. Um, and I, it started me on a holistic journey because I knew I was doing lots of things wrong. And believe you me, the things that I was having was gynecological problems. And as a gynecologist, I was just sort of putting a plaster on it. So, you know, popping pills and things like that eventually resulted in a surgery and a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. And, you know, really, I really hit rock bottom with my health. So it really sort of woke me up and I started thinking there's clearly something, lots of wrong, things that I'm doing really wrong. So started exploring, but then obviously it's a bit of a rabbit hole, isn't it? So I thought, let me get into some kind of a structure. So I didn't want information from lots of different places and, you know, misleading. And it's, uh, it's sometimes very contradictory, the information that you get. Yeah. So I said, let me go to a trusted source, which all of us want to do. So I enrolled in the College of uh, Naturopathic Medicine, uh, trained as a holistic health coach and applied the principles of diet and lifestyle first to myself. Mm -hmm. And I started noticing huge results, you know, subhanAllah. Um, I was struggling with weight. So I, you know, within a few months, I was my ideal weight. I had huge amounts of energy, okay. concentration. Uh, I could think clearly. So, you know, when I was working and at the time that I was having my health struggles, you know, I, I'm sure lots of women will relate to this. I thought it was, um, it, you can't ask for help. You can't say, yeah. I can't cope anymore. Yeah. So at home, I had to still do all the things that I was doing. Um, and uh, I'm quite a perfectionist in my own little way. So, you know, even if somebody did something, if I didn't like the way they did it, I would do it again. So, you know, just being really hard, as you said, really harsh on myself. Yeah. I could have asked for help. I could have made things easier for myself. But I didn't. And the same thing at work as well. And now I know that I was in my perimenopause. And I don't know if you're in that age group, Shahina. So if you're in your 40s, yeah. uh, that's that's the kind of age group that you your hormones start playing up. And really, you lose yourself. And that was what, ha what was happening to me. And although I study hormone, hormones and endocrinology as a gynecologist, well, that was my specialty. I still couldn't put two and two together because that's how conventional medicine is. Yeah. You know, you are taught to deal with things, fix problems but not look at the root cause. What is causing those problems, you see? So when I studied holistic health, it just opened my eyes and I just started looking at things in such a different way. And this has been the experience, not just my experience. There's so many conventional doctors that I have, I'm in touch with now. There's a pediatrician. She said the same thing. She said, when I started, so the same system that we study in such a lot of detail, but you know how one relates to the other. So how your gut is related to your hormones and how is it related to your immunity? How is your stress, as you talked about, related to your hormones and how does it affect it? So in conventional medicine, it is very compartmentalized. So, you know, you ha there's, there's a chest specialist and there's a heart specialist mm -hmm. and uh, there's not much conversation between the two. So you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's a lot of, um, uh, you know, like the correlation between the different systems and how, how your body parts actually act together. It was a real eye opener when I started studying holistic health. So anyway, um, started working on myself. Alhamdulillah, you know, I'm in a very different health space at the moment for myself. When you make changes, your family makes changes. So it's a ripple effect. And mashallah, my, all of them have benefited in so many ways because I started me as a woman. I started buying the right things, cooking the right things, encouraging the right kind of lifestyle and all of that. And um, yes, and that led me to uh, coaching perimenopausal women, which I've been doing. And mashallah, they have get, been getting, getting the results. It's really, it's a no brainer. It's just going back to basics and, you know, maybe what uh, we should have been doing is just a modern lifestyle has made it very difficult for us to live the life that we should be living. It's just going back and finding that and finding what little things can make a difference and much it makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of my story. Um, yes, hormones is my sort of speciality. It's something that really interests me. And yeah, when Shahina put out that post, I was so happy that somebody had actually asked me. And I want to just say, this is not, a, it is a very relevant question on a group like ours. Uh, I'm part of other groups and wherever there, there are entrepreneurs, people bring in hormone specialists to talk about this. So it is a very valid question. So yes, some people may be able to deal with it. Doesn't mean that this is not a problem or not, I don't mean a problem. This is not an issue that needs to be addressed. And some women struggle through it. Yeah. So, again, uh, I think it's, uh, uh, inshallah, many people will find this discussion really useful. Um, so, the a period that you and I went through, the perimenopause, is a completely different thing. And, you know, lots of um, things happen. And I'll address that later on if there is time. But I just want to go back. And uh, so, 
if you're an entrepreneur and you ha you don't have any problems with your periods or anything like that, you have regular periods on your time and things like that. How can you work effectively and productively yeah. uh, looking after yourself, being kind to yourself as an entrepreneur? So this is my first focus. We have to remember as women, we're different to men. Yeah. We are not inferior to men. We are different exactly, to men. Yeah. Yes. Men, to yeah, men have a cycle, which is a daily cycle. It's a diurnal cycle. So they have the peak of the hormones in the beginning of the day, which declines towards uh, uh, the night. Yeah. And that is every single day. That's how male hormones work. Female hormones, on the other hand, are cyclical. So you don't have a circadian rhythm. You don't have a you know, morning, evening kind of rhythm. There is, I mean, cortisol and things like that. There are certain hormones, but the female hormones as such, estrogen and progesterone, which are the main female hormones, they have a cyclical pattern. So they change through the cycle. So they change through the month. So this is how we are so different from men. Yeah. So that's why when we do, when we undertake a business and start our entrepreneurial journey, we cannot, so that's why it's really nice to be on a group with female entrepreneurs because you have similar um, issues. A man would never understand why you feel a certain way on certain days of the month. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So uh, that's number one. So I feel the most important thing is to embrace our femininity and embrace our womanhood and uh, really honor our hormones, so to speak, and live in a happy space with them and know your body, know your hormones so that you can, you know, mashallah, the feminine way of doing business is so different from the masculine way. And there are lots of people, lots of business um, uh, consultants and coaches who j focus only on this, you know, the, yeah. the way of thinking and, you know, like the way of doing business. So I'll talk a little bit about the menstrual cycle very briefly. I'm not going to go into details just so that you have sort of a brief overview. So what I'm looking at is, a, you know, a woman who has cycles every 28 days or 30 days. So we're not talking about irregular cycles and problematic cycles. That's another story altogether. So you have regular cycles. More or less, you're okay. You have a little bit of premenstrual problems and, you know, mood changes and other things. But you have fairly regular cycles. So how can you use the hormonal changes to your advantage? So yeah. This is what I want to focus on. So if we divide the cycle, I'll, I'll just for simplicity's sake, I'll divide it into three parts. So first is, uh, the first part is the first 14 days of the cycle. So from the time you sort of start your period to uh, the time you ovulate. So you sort of ovulate around the 14th day. Yeah. So during this period, so starting from the second day of your period, let's put it that way, to the 14th day, what happens, the hormone that is rising, that is going up, is estrogen. Okay. Okay. Then you ovulate on the 14th day. And from then onwards, the hormone that is going up is progesterone. So roughly these are two big chunks. So, you know, about 13 days here, 14 days, th th another 13 days there. Towards the end, so just a day before your period, your hormones plummet, both of them, estrogen and progesterone. And that's the reason why you have your period. So your, you know, yeah. womb lining sheds. So those are a couple of days, I would say, or maybe three days. So the day before your period, the day off your period, and maybe another day. So those are three days, which I want to talk about completely separately. Yeah. So, so we have these three, so we have these three chunks, two big chunks. So the first 13, 12, 13 days of your periods, the next 12, 13 days of your periods, and the one day before your period and the two days. So that's a little chunk there. So, uh, as I said, the first period, so the first part, your estrogen levels are uh, rising. So we need to understand what estrogen is. So if we were to personify estrogen, estrogen is your bubbly, chirpy friend who puts you on a high every time you see her. You see, it's your, you know, you, you know, you want to socialize, you want to mix with people, you want to talk to people, you are so energetic. That's estrogen. Okay. Okay. How could you use this part <laughs> of your cycle to advantage as an entrepreneur? Yeah. So this is the question. So this is the period that you should plan if you are going to be a guest speaker somewhere. Yeah. If you're going to do any networking events. Yeah. If you are going to be meeting up with people, you know, so any kind of your business activity which needs, needs socializing. So, um, or even if you're having a new business partnership and, you know, so you're going to, uh, you're going to present yourself as your energetic best because that is how you're feeling. That's how your hormones are. 
you yeah. are bubbly and you're chirpy and you're full of energy and that's what's going to come across okay. so these kind of activities so the so you know so let's put it the external activity so your business has got an internal part so you know yeah. your your marketing and your planning and your strategy and all of that that's the internal part and then there is there is the external part you know where you um, you're promoting your business so to speak if you're launching your business if you're launching a product or launching your services is the best part to launch so yeah. between the 7th to the 14th day because you are so full of energy you don't need to pretend <laughs> you don't yeah. need to sort of have a coffee or anything like that that's how you are your hormones are like you know really uh, lifting you up so this is these are the activities that you should focus on okay. in this part of your cycle the next part of your cycle so for, uh, when after you've ovulated from 14th day to say that 27th day so 13 days there is where your progesterone levels are rising now again to understand and i you know i don't think i'm going in a lot of detail because as a woman you should understand your hormones so you know like yes. i feel this is essential knowledge this is not um, oh i don't yeah. need to know this i and think it's essential knowledge and i know? think just on that point as well just to kind of say and again this is why it's so important especially in our community we do talk about it because this information is not always understood or known or we go and try and find mm -hmm. this information from places yeah um, so actually it's great to get even this bit even if it's not in a lot of detail it's it's enough to kind of get us to start thinking about the fact that we are going through yeah, these yeah, different stages yeah, yeah. so yeah. sorry so the second bit is so so what is progesterone then so progest so this is the time that progesterone is rising so what who what is progesterone so progesterone is the hormone so again let's personify progesterone so you sort of remember progesterone is your friend who you go to when you're feeling very anxious and nervous so you go to her she offers you a cup of tea she talks to you and you just suddenly become calm and forget your problems hmm. so progesterone is your calming hormone it relaxes you so you're not a, you're not in a high as with estrogen progesterone calms you so this is the period where i mean by all means you could network and but you're not going to come out with that you, you're going to come out with that very laid back kind of an attitude and things and if that's what you want that's fine as well but this is the time where you should focus on the internal aspects of your business so also things where it needs creative cr creativity so you know oh, okay. um uh, you know like business strategies and um, um you know even audits or uh, you know finances and um, even social media posts something like so creativity and things like that but not so much of meeting people and socializing and you know networking and that kind of a thing yeah you could do now, look you could do it at any time but if you sort of think um how your hormones are going to help your activity this is the way it's going to help so you can plan the internal aspects of your business at this time of your cycle so you know you would really flourish you would do it really well because you're very calm you're very relaxed your mind is open you know uh, you can think in uh, you know creativity as we know is really important to a business isn't it so it will help you do all of that now coming to the day before your period and uh when you have your period so at least a couple of days for some, for some people it would be three days you shouldn't do anything mm -hmm. you should just take a rest yeah. this is your rest period and, 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 and without being sorry unapologetically taking that break. yes unapologetically take a rest just do, just close your business this is you know as a hospital doctor i could never do that yeah. you know because i had to uh, i couldn't say well i'm on my period so i'm not going to do these on calls you can't do that isn't it but as an entrepreneur you have the liberty you have you know how you you so and if your periods are sort of if you're fortunate enough then you that your periods are you know some people some women have it completely on a certain day they know when to expect the period yeah. you can you can uh, you know uh, block your time at that time and say that this time I'm not going to do anything there is a sister i don't want to name her if she comes across and she sees this and she says this is me yeah i really admire her she will always put out a post i'm you know uh, i'm going to honor my periods i'm off business you'll not be seeing me for 3 days or 4 days and she does this almost every cycle Good. and she really works according to her cycle again i'm not going to name her but if yes. she sees this and she comes across then um and many people will know who i'm talking about but anyway so and uh, mashallah you can see her energy you know so when she comes across so when you've had that 3 days rest and when you come back you come back with the and yeah. remember after that your estrogen is increasing so you come back with all that new energy you've had a rest and you come back with all that new energy and you can really put your 100% in the business yeah so this is the way uh, in a very short in a nutshell really that how you could use your hormones to your advantage in your business yeah that's really great so because that's obviously that's relevant to 
every girl, every woman of every age, and even actually just whether you're an entrepreneur or not. But obviously with an entrepreneur, we've got a little bit more like, you know, the sister you mentioned has, we had that flexibility to say, okay, we're not working for three days. Obviously in a job, it was different. When you're working, you have to kind of go and do that. Um, I guess just very briefly, because I know this is not specifically around that perimenopause or when it's not just at that point, I guess when there is some sort of changes happening, what's like the best way to kind of make have that recognition so like for me like I said I was going through lots of different things and it didn't it didn't occur to me at the time I just put it down to me being either very stressed or me just feeling a little bit deflated um it's now when I look back I'm like actually I don't it wasn't those were not my true emotions it was actually yeah. so uh, do you have any ways that somebody could recognize that it's your hormones playing up and not necessarily you not being capable because I guess again you know it's a known fact as women I think we're a little, we are definitely harder on ourselves we seem to not have the same level of confidence as men you know we do question ourselves a lot more regardless of how strong and confident you are as a woman I think everybody every lady does go through that um, and it's you know we'll have those moments where we are sitting there and I think it's an, it's also an entrepreneurial journey to sit there and really kind of feel quite stressed or question whether you're doing what you're doing makes sense. But what I'm trying to understand is, is there ways to be able to recognize that it's not you, it's not the true emotions, but it's your hormones that are kind of affecting it. And I don't know if there is, but maybe you can provide some insights if there is ways to recognize it. Yeah. So uh, anything which is not your usual reaction. So, yeah. you know, um, you know yourself. So if, uh, for instance, if somebody came up and said something which is well, a bit annoying, let's put it that way, what is your normal reaction? Would you just let it pass? Would you just ignore it? Or, uh, you know, what would you do? Now, some people are very hyper anyway, you know, they just react like, and that's their normal reaction. Yeah. But if you are the kind of person who's very laid back about things, things don't phase you a lot, and you find yourself really reacting, you know, so clearly that is, that is not you. Mm. So, you can recognize that this is an emotion which is not your own emotion. It is probably a result of a hormonal imbalance. And this, this, so this is a hyper kind of a reaction. It could be the other way around. So for instance, if you are somebody who uh, is very positive, as we were talking about, and you know, like um, always sees the good side of things, yeah. and so suddenly you, you, know, you just feel that, oh, I'm not good enough and I'm this. But this is not you. This is not your nature. Now, some people are negative anyway, you know, like <laughs> that's, that's their nature, you know, so that you, uh, but if you see a change in yourself, so you're somebody very positive, always look at the bright side of things, but off late, you think that, you know, uh, you just don't have confidence and you just don't know what's happening, then that's clearly your hormones playing up. So you have to look at your baseline. What are you like? And you know yourself best, you know? Yeah. So uh, what, what is your normal reaction? How do you normally react to things? So if your reaction now is completely different, and I'm so happy you actually noticed that because, you know, when you went through whatever, a couple, uh, you know, the, in the couple of months that you were talking about, you knew that this was not you and you yeah. took a step back. And that's the most important thing, really. Now, I just want to highlight the perimenopause. The perimenopause is the years before the menopause, so it's in your 40s, and even late 30s, actually, women have these changes. Your hormones start changing, basically, you know? So basically, your estrogen and progesterone. So, uh, you know, they, you can have very high levels of estrogen, very low levels of estrogen. Both is not good for you. So yeah. you, you, you see what I'm saying? So as I said, estrogen is your bubbly, chirpy friend. Too much of her, and you get snappy and irritable and angry about everything. Too little of her, you get depressed. Okay. So you see this, this and hormones go up and down in perimenopause. Progesterone, we said she calms you. Yeah. If you don't have progesterone, you're agitated, you're anxious, you're all the time nervous, questioning yourself, doubting yourself. So all of that is a result of progesterone deficiency. And that can happen a lot in perimenopause because you don't ovulate as frequently. So the way progesterone is produced, is produced by the ovary after you ovulate. And as you go through the change or going through the, you know, the years before the change, you ovulate less frequently. So every cycle you do not ovulate. As a result, you don't produce, produce a progesterone and you tend to get very anxious. Some women will find trouble falling asleep because they have lots of ruminating negative thoughts in their head, okay. worrying about what happened during the day, worrying about what, you're, what I'm gonna to do tomorrow. So, you know, like you, you suddenly become a warrior and you are not that person. So again, this is, a. a you know, something that uh, is because of hormones, yeah. um, period problems, weight gain. So all of that can happen. And 
it's very common in the perimenopause. And this is why I like to sort of, uh, and although the physical aspects of it, the period problems, the hot flushes, the weight gain, this is spoken about a lot, mm. but the effect it has on your mental well being is not spoken about. Yeah. So I'll give you a statistic, Shaheen. I sp uh, shared it in a, uh, a post as well, but it might have got missed. So 25% of women in the perimenopause in the UK, they give up work. Mm. And you really need to look into that. Why do they give up work? Clearly it's because they're not coping in some way. So the same pressures that they had, they're not able to manage. And I, I went through that. I saw that, you know, yeah. I would consider myself a very efficient, very, you know, like just could handle everything at home, at work, you know, almost calling myself a superwoman. And I couldn't do that anymore. Yeah. But I wouldn't let go. I wouldn't ask for help. I wouldn't tell people I was having a problem. things like uh, you know i need to call up my son whether he's free i would even forget that you know like uh, yeah so it was little things that you it's a complete no-brainer you don't don't need to think about things uh, even things like i would say uh, you know if i'm cooking something switch off the cooker you know strange things i, I was putting on my to-do list because that was the only way i could cope yeah. you know um normally everything would be here up here you know do this and do that do that i just didn't just couldn't think like you know so uh, yeah, hormones really affect your mental well-being. Um, many women get very depressed. On the other hand, many women get very agitated about lots of things. So, and affects your relationships. It yeah. really affects your relationships. It can, and, well, it can actually, and that's what triggered my. Obviously, I, I think I said that in the post, and I said it earlier on. It can, it can drastically change your life if you don't understand. Like, yes. I could have potentially given up yeah. on my business. That's kind of at that point I was feeling. So that in itself was quite a, is really quite eye opening and quite strong. That if my imagine I could have in a click and a finger, click of a finger, just spoiled everything that I'd worked for the last few years because I was at the depth of this, like whatever it was, and mm -hmm. and that's I think it's really good because I have seen your post where you have talked about that, mm -hmm. and it's so true. Like it really is, can be really drastic. It can be very what, what you can do. You did absolutely the right thing, you know, and this is why I want to bring about awareness of perimenopause. And that's really my mission now at the moment. You know, I really want to. Now, obviously, I coach women with perimenopausal symptoms, but it doesn't have to be that. Many people will not commit to a coaching program. That's absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. I still want to give out so much value that you have enough things to sort of, you know, start doing a few things that, that, you know, make little changes in your life that you can deal with these things, you know, not everybody will say that, oh, look, I really need to, uh, you know, and some people do, but many people want to start off somewhere. So I really want to give out a lot of free information. And uh, in my post, you must have seen there are lots of little things, little yeah. tips sometimes, and I will be sharing today as well. So some little things that you can do that you can at least get started, you know, on yeah. your journey and know the wrong things that you're doing. So, you know, keep away from those kind of things. And, uh, just on this note, I just wanted to say something that um, I've started very recently. I mean, well, just last week, really, we haven't even uploaded it. I've started a podcast uh, with another sister, and it is going to be on holistic wellness. Okay. Um, it's also, we both reverts, actually. So it's also going to be a little bit about a journey about Islam and things like that. So um, I would ask sisters, so it's called One Step Closer. It's... Um, um, it's on, uh, uh, you know, you can um, listen to it on Spotify. So the thing is that uh, you, uh, it'll give a lot of free information. So that's something that I would, you know, encourage sisters to go and listen to, you know, when it's up and running. Uh, we'll be inviting lots of holistic practic practitioners as well. So inshallah, there'll be a lot of free information that you can just yeah. take it and go, you know, start start doing your thing, you know, like, um, and uh, you, know, you don't have to wait for, okay, I'm, this is when I'm going to do it. I just feel that, you know, you must start making changes in your health. And as soon as you notice that there's something wrong, that as soon as you realize that, you know, something is not quite right. And can I, so, can I just clarify here, or then maybe yeah. ask a question? A lot, of this, a lot of the holistic information that you will share and stuff, is not necessary just for perimenopause, because like with mine, no. I, I didn't, it didn't get picked up. So I went and had my blood test done. So it hasn't been picked up whether it was or not. Um, the chances are it's very much the starting stage of it. And that's, it's not, that's why it's not got picked up. Um, but I guess a lot of the holistic information, the tips and stuff you're providing will also help women who are just generally having imbalance 
hormones or like yes, you know periods and stuff so it's not just for perimenopause no no, no it's not yeah. just for perimenopause it's for it's for women in general um it's easier you see the thing is when you talk to everybody you talk to nobody so for me that's yeah. the reason why i have niched yes. down to perimenopause so that you know like this is the kind Absolutely. of uh, you know, would, yeah first yeah. thing about yeah. business isn't it yeah you, know, you, <laughs> yeah you can't you can't serve everybody can you yeah. but having said that you know hormonal problems it can be in any age group it can be in your teenage it could be after menopause you know so perimenopause and menopause are very related so lots of people who come to me are in the early years of their menopause as well and it's yeah. a very similar kind of a situation but it's just for um just that you know i you know the the right kind of people hear my yes. message that's the reason why i say it's better yeah. but yeah hormone problems are for ev- anybody and everybody yeah. really. so do you have some, doing... what would be some of your top tips in regards to managing the the holistic approach to managing hormones so we obviously mm. talked about how to take advantage of the different mm. stages mm. especially mm. as an entrepreneur um mm. i'll touch a little bit p a little bit on how i think you can yeah. maybe do a yeah. little bit of like mental resilience or yes. that, like my own sort of thoughts but from a holistic point of view yeah. what are like maybe i don't know three three things that you could say yeah, three actually, yeah. yeah so i'll give yeah yeah that's what i was hoping i was give, i was you know because i can say so much but mm. then you'll go back and do nothing so i want to leave you with three things which you will do inshallah and see results so the first thing i would say is stress management because uh so we have a uh, we have a hormone in our body called cortisol which is produ- which is produced from our adrenal glands which are two small glands sitting on top of our kidneys this the, this is the hormone which is responsible for your stress response so you know um, so when man live in the wild a wild beast came chasing him he ran so his his heart rate would speed up his breathing would get uh, faster um, his blood sugar would rise um, you know because the muscles needed all that thing to run and then he would run uh, and then once he escaped the beast he would just go back to whatever he was doing and forget about it but what has happened now there is no lion in the room but we are chronically stressed so uh, we are going to go and drop our children off to school we are worrying about the traffic from 6 uh, o'clock uh, whether they're going to get ready on, on time or not worrying about whether i'll get to work on uh, on time or not so you know our stress levels never stop so cortisol is a wonderful hormone it is a life saving saving hormone isn't it it makes you run from the wild animal but we don't have a wild animal here that's the important thing to remember but if the cortisol is all the time raised which is for many of us i would say 90% of us are stressed and the only people who are not stressed i would say are the ones who actually make a conscious attempt to uh, you know indulge in relaxation exercises and there would be a very small percentage who have a lifestyle which is very relaxed and i don't know if anybody really i mean most people are really stressed the people that i know so balancing cortisol is the most important thing if you sort of take care of this as a direct result of that your other female hormones your estrogen and progesterone and all of that will get balanced because cortisol it almost steals your progesterone so it so the way um, cortisol is produced is a similar kind of pa- pathway so if you have a lot of cortisol you will have less progesterone okay and if you remember we said progesterone was your calming hormone yeah. so you're constantly in an anxious state uh and it has got lots of other side effects other you know it uh, increases your chances of having diabetes because it causes something called insulin resistance and all of that so st- so the number one thing i would say is stress management so recognize your stressors and try and work so do practical things actually to work around those stressors you know so you obviously have so you know if you have um if you have a morning um, routine where you have lots of things to do sort of plan ahead make it easy for yourself those kind of things but in ad- addition to that however much you do that you will still get stressed so this one of the simplest ways of actually calming yourself down and uh, getting that heart rate down is deep breathing exercises mm. so it is just breathing through the tummy and taking a small deep breath and breathing out breathing out longer and you move and your tummy is moving not your chest yeah so you can even keep a hand on your chest keep your hand on your tummy and it should it should be your tummy which is moving so when your tummy moves and you breathe through your abdomen in the way that i've showed you just four or five breaths it stimulates a nerve called the vagus which brings your heart rate down slows down your breathing puts you in a relaxed state yeah so this is one of the simplest things that you can do 
uh, you can make it a point to do four or five breaths like this first thing in the morning, maybe in the afternoon or anytime you're feeling stressed. Um, anything else that relaxes you. So it could be a walk in nature. It could be having a conversation with your mom. If, uh, you, if, you know, if that relaxes you. It could be reading a book. It could be just sitting out in the garden. So make sure you indulge in 10 to 15 minutes of something that really calms you down and something that you really like doing. A bit like self-care, but it also sort of balances your hormones by controlling your cortisol. So I would say stress management is the number one thing I would say. The second thing uh, that I would say is uh, where diet is concerned. Um, so again, in stress management, I would also say prioritize your sleep. So make sure you sleep on time and get your you know, good quality sleep. I don't want to put number of hours and all of that. But yeah, average is seven to eight hours. But you know, get good quality sleep. So make sure you don't not on your device last thing at night <laughs> because you know, that stops you from uh, going to sleep. And yeah. that's one of the problems in perimenopause. You find it difficult to fall off to sleep when you didn't have a problem earlier. So, so that's the stress management is one part and stress and sleep, I would say, you know, it's almost the same thing. And if you can sort of master this, you have mastered half of it really. So it's really important. So it's not just uh, wishy-washy stuff. This is really important. The second thing I would say is uh, where your diet is concerned, we tend to have these highs and lows in our energy levels. I don't know if you've noticed that. Yeah. Many, many, many women complain of this. They said they have this high energy and then, you know, this is an afternoon slump and I can't do anything and all of that. This is a very common problem. To maintain your energy levels on a good level, the best way is to cut down as much as you can on sugars. So, um, you know, uh, sugars and simple carbohydrates, so white bread and white rice and all of that. Replace it with uh, complex carbohydrates, so wholemeal bread and, uh, you know, uh, brown rice and things like that. Uh, if you have to sweeten, use honey or stevia or something like that. I mean, sugar is, um, it has got so many uh, other ramifications, but one of the main things is that it really affects your energy levels. It also affects your gut bacteria, and that way it disrupts your hormones. So sh if there was one thing in diet, I would say, watch out for your sugar and just try and uh, have a you know, more fibrous diet and things like that. Yeah. Um, and that'll keep you full for longer as well. So if you um, had um, you know, meals with good quality protein and um, uh, you know, whole grains and uh, fruits and vegetables, it'll keep you satisfied for longer. And you won't, so you know the sugar is released slowly mm. and it, you don't have those sudden dips and things like that. So you have those energy levels for a long time and you don't keep feeling hungry. You don't feel like keeping on snacking. So, that's for the diet, I would say. So that's really important. And the third thing I would say is indulge in some sort of exercise, even if it was for 10, 15 minutes every day. It is great for your moods. So when you exercise, it releases something called endorphins, which is a mood enhancer. It is actually a mood enhancer. You actually feel good. And you'll notice this difference. So most of us, we think it's a waste of time. And you know, like I could do this and I could do that. Your body will thank you for it your body will really thank you for it. If you, uh, you know, it has so many, uh, so many effects on other systems of your body, but I'm not even going to get into that. If you just look at your moods, you know, there is, you, and your hormones, it affects both in a very positive way. Yeah. So, uh, so, you know, your business is not going to suffer. Uh, just take out 10, 15 minutes for yourself, you know, do and do what you like, you know, don't do something because somebody said it. So if a walk is what you like, go for a 10 minute walk, 15 minute walk, 30 minute walk, whatever you want to do. Um, you don't like going to the gym, don't go to the gym. Yeah. There's another person who loves hitting the gym. I mean, that gives them the, you know, that thing that, you know, they want to. So just do what you can. And, but make sure you move. Let's just put it that way. Just make sure that you move. It, yeah. It'll work wonders for your hormones. It'll work wonders for your mental health. And it'll really put you in a very happy space of mind. And you will be able to do more, not less. Yeah, that's great. That's brilliant. I think it's great to have like the three. Yeah, those three tips there to hand. I'm sure there's lots of different other ones, but they seem like yeah. they're the, they're the yeah. top three. And a lot of that then ties into sort of what I would have said anyway, in regards to how, how do you then how do you approach business and how do you approach sort of your day to day business as well as a result of this? I think the first thing to recognize is and we've said it at the start of the start of the call at the start of the um, video as well you're a woman, accept that, work with it. Like, don't shy away from it, don't hide away from it. It's actually, in a way, it's our strength because with yes. that comes 
so many different qualities that make us so qualified and well equipped to actually run a business and manage teams. Um, I guess, you know, we also we talked about the fact that recognize what you are like and how exactly. your moods are and what you're like. So like, you know, I know, I know I'm touchy, like the day or two before, like any little thing and I'll be like, you know, completely wind me up sort of thing. So I try to then just stay away you know, even with my, I have now, I'm managing a couple of people and, mm. you know, I'm very conscious about the fact that I've got to make sure my own mood is in, in, um, in hand. So I'm not mm. then taking it out of them unnecessarily. Mm. Like I'm not snapping on them unnecessarily because you can then spoil the relationship. Mm. So I think that's, that's the thing. I think really work out what, what your mood is like and at what points in times plan and you said it earlier plan around that and I think you've got to be very conscious when you do have teams um you know, that's one thing you've got to be careful of I think the other thing is like I said before as well make sure you take time to regulate yourself um if you are having any doubts if you are having any of negative thoughts and stuff don't make a decision when you're in that space like really really take a step back pick up the phone and speak to someone or mm -hmm. find somebody to speak with um, because I think sometimes, again, within our circles, we don't want to talk about it or we don't have someone who to, who to talk about it, especially if we're doing business. you are not necessarily got a circle where you've got other friends that are doing business um, because a lot of us have got, you know, how many years worth of career before we moved into this entrepreneurial world. So a lot of our friends are actually still in that career world and not in this world. So if that's the case, you know, and that's the nice thing about also this group here. You know, there's plenty of people you could reach out to and say, I need to have a chat with someone, like just whatever it might be, just to talk through what it is that you're thinking to make sure it's rational or not rational. Um, yeah, and I think that's, I think you said even earlier, you know, same thing I would have said is plan your tasks in that way as well. You know, if you know, yeah. like, you know, this is the day I generally start, well, I'm not going to do like lots of heavy heavy work mm. planned in for the day mm. i love the fact that someone's booking time off and just saying i'm downing tools i think we have to do it i think we really have to do it and it's one thing i feel very very strongly about that unfortunately the the perception out there or the perception that's been displayed in regards to being an entrepreneur is working 24 7 you know you must be hustling you must be hustling no you know what don't it's not the right way to do it um you choose what you want to do and how much you want to do for the business like why did you leave why did you leave the nine to five then or you know yeah. whatever job you were on the, the whole purpose was to and you're absolutely right when people start off uh they just think that you know like if i don't do it who will do it and you yeah. think more is more more is not more sometimes you just spend yeah. the whole and you've done nothing really isn't it so uh it's so important to just and you know, one thing, Shaina, I would say that, you know, risk our sustenance is from Allah. We yes. need to realize that because, you know, you can do what you want. You can spend how much time. So, you know, just even have having the spiritual connection and knowing that, you know, what is meant for you will come to you. So it doesn't, if you kill yourself, uh, it doesn't mean that your business is going to flourish. It doesn't, yeah. it, does, it, it doesn't equate to that. So that's also something really important. To yeah. remember, I think. And I'll also, I'll do, a, I'll do a live about it and I'll do all my ranting on my live about <laughs> what <laughs> I hate. I hate seeing the post I do see and I hate seeing some of the messages that so-called entrepreneurs are presenting. And it gives such a, it, and I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to go off for, but just for a quick moment, it just gives a really wrong perception and people who come into doing their own business are expecting that. And then it's a massive shock one way or the other. There's either they get completely burnt out or they go and get into like crazy amount of problems because they're like, yeah, I'm just going to throw money at it and it's going to be millions coming back to me. Um, so, but yeah, I think, I, I think we've covered you covered a lot of what I was going to say. And also I think it's really great to understand sort of those different levels throughout the month. Um, because I hadn't actually, I knew, I knew kind of vaguely, but I never really thought about it in the sense of um, sort of how best to use that. I remember quite a few years ago reading an article to say, you know, the best time to go shopping is 
uh, middle of your cycle or something like that like you know that's when you'll be in the mood to like choose things if you go just before your site just before your period or something you're not going to you're not going to be happy with anything you try on that so again like there's things yeah. like that for yeah. running a business isn't yeah. it yeah yes of course yeah, so. um, you know, um, I don't know if Shahina had something more to say. I just, you know, I actually just for, as we were talking, I remembered something, Shahina. And um, uh, you can take it as a video testimonial from me if you want. So when I started off my entrepreneurial journey, I was not very sure which way I wanted to go. Do you remember having a conversation with me <laughs> very, very long time back? And I think Shahina had just launched her consultation services and she was offering free discovery calls. Now, this is sometime last year where I was not sure about what I wanted to do. So I had given up work. I was writing a blog at that point of time. Yeah. I was looking into holistic health, <laughs> but I was just thinking, how can I use all my strengths, whatever I have, and, um, you know, use it to actually help people. And I got in touch with Shahina. And, you know, Shahina, I don't know if I have that pain because I normally don't throw away things. If I find it, I'll send it. No, I don't, I, I don't know where it is. But I actually wrote down everything that you told me. <laughs> and I, I, I just, I, yes, I wrote down everything. And she, so I was very new to social media at that time. I had no, she, and you, I remember you said, you know, um, I wanted to promote my blog at that point of time. That is what was the main conversation about. And I was thinking of monetizing the blog. And yeah. that was a conversation I was having with China. And she gave me lots of tips. And she also said, you know, with your kind of background, you know, you could be doing talks, you could be educating, you could be going into, and she gave me a whole bunch of ideas. And I was so overwhelmed. And I thought, oh, I didn't realize I could be doing all of these things. And do you know, so many things I have inculcated. And you, you talked about going, doing Facebook lives. I didn't know what was Facebook. I mean, hardly knew what was Facebook. And I didn't know what was a Facebook Live at that time. You, I, I had no And idea now you're teaching me. <laughs> <laughs> so you see what I'm telling you? Yeah. Mashallah. So, uh, you know, I've come such a long way from there. But many of the things that you told me, Shahina, I'm doing it today. And of course, I found my uh, way, you know, as... Uh, and I think what you told me had a big impact on me. Um, and of course, I found a different way of, you mm -hmm. know, going about it. And that's, you know, it's your journey, isn't it, really? Yes. And, um, uh, you know, reaching out, making sure, like, people are not going to imagine that I offer a service unless you say that you do certain things. So, yeah. you know, being uh, more vocal about it, talking about it and things like that, you know, I didn't, you know, coming from my background, you know, never yeah. have to do that so you know so it was a very new journey so i'm just remembering mashallah so the advice that shahina gave a lot of it i've taken on board and alhamdulillah oh, you know, come far. so yeah <laughs> so your advice was really useful so anybody who's looking to uh, do some kind of consulting i would really you know mashallah shahina gave me some really really good ideas and tips at that time yeah no no you know what i'm, I'm glad i'm glad it's helped because at the end of the day i remember when i was starting and even now i still have times when you know i go and i look for where I can get that help. Um, yeah. I've obviously now, I've got a few people that I've got around that I can go to, but at the time for a good couple of years, I didn't have it. And that's mm. one of the reasons why I do the consultancy that I do uh, and I, on that, provide that 30 minute discovery and then a lot more, I can do more than that as well. But just to have that initial chat with somebody um, mm. and then, you know, just wherever it might be, just to run through ideas and stuff. And it's only as a result of talking that, you can also, I get ideas from it as well. From those conversations, I'll get ideas as well because either you've said something or you've asked something which has made me think and I kind of, so yeah, no. And I, that's again why I'm a big supporter of the group um, and what Sally has trying to do. I think it's brilliant. Um, and I know I'm, I'm sort of not as active as I'd like to be. Um, and I will and shall try to be that, but my, it's always there. I'm always available for somebody to just yeah. drop me a message to say I'd like to have a chat. Yeah. So, but it's lovely, to, it's lovely to see, like, you know, how you're doing. And even now, that's what I was thinking. It's like, you've got to be at, you're going to have to be in talks. You have to be there, like, talking to people and getting out into, like, companies and talk, places where you just talk about yeah, so, the problem. Like, so, you know, I, I don't want to sort of preempt that, but all that is in the pipeline. I'm going to realize it's happening. So, yeah. you know, so, mashallah, even the podcast was such a big step for me because if you remember, I said, I can't go live, I can't talk, I'm just too shy. And you said, no, 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 it's okay, I'm shy as well, I do it. And you know, you yeah. were sort of encouraging me. And I said, it was just something I couldn't picture myself, but Alhamdulillah, you, you know, there's so much of benefit. Because at the end of the day, you know, you do something which will bring benefit, isn't it? It's, so if somebody needs to hear what I have to say, I yeah. need to forget about how I feel, you know? 
yeah. you say it because it's going to benefit somebody so inshallah you know so just looking back into why you're doing what you're doing and your purpose yeah. of doing what you're doing yeah. so and give yourself it, give yourself the time don't do it on somebody else's time scale go through yes, it yourself as long as you're working on yourself yeah. if it, even if it takes you i'm i'm a very slow learner i'm always behind the curve and i have no issue with that no. um i'm i will take my time and i'll yeah. go through what i need to go through to get me where i need to be kind of thing um yeah. it, some people are different some people can do it at a click of a finger yeah. um yeah. you know like for me even now going to a networking event it's a big thing i still i still go very very like reluctantly <laughs> but for some people they they'll be in a networking event every day of the week and be happy with it yeah. so i think yeah. that's the other thing you got to do it in your yeah. get listen go and talk to somebody get some advice um and then work through it as best as you can um don't put pressure on yourself to then do as exactly what they're saying and how to do it yeah um, so just i think this is so that. so so important what you said is so important because we really when you start off your entrepreneurial journey you do get um pulled into this because you see people doing things and then you will have people advise you that you have to do this if you don't do this x y z you yeah. do, you won't get to where you want to be. and that this is not true Yeah. this is really not true because you know everybody of course there's certain basic principles and certain things like you have to do yeah. but you can you can do it in a way that seems uh, comfortable for you so yeah, yeah. Just, and yeah. and it's your business it's yes. nobody else's business so you decide how yeah, how you what you want that to be and what you want it to look like it could be just you and mm-hmm. 20 people or it could be you 20 team members and thousands of women that you're helping um just like for me it it's up to me how big i want my business or how small i want my business um and i'm not going to do that based on people saying to me well that's not going to give you that much money is it if you did this you're going to get it's not that it's about what i want and how i want that business to look um so it don't and that's another thing don't get caught up in you know what people think you yeah. should be doing and how yeah. you should be monetizing things etc you know if you stick to whatever you want if you choose yeah you know yeah so yeah what feels right to you because you know at the end of the day you know we all are comfortable with certain things there's no right or wrong i mean you know like it's just what you feel comfortable doing and as long yeah. as that agrees with you it makes it gives you peace of mind if you makes you know be able to sleep at night without you know feeling bad about things i mean that's the way you should be doing things yeah. because that's the reason why you transition into this so that you can do things on your own terms yeah. uh, not on somebody else's terms yeah well, yeah absolutely society terms yeah. or and everybody else's terms yeah yeah so brilliant so well, it was lovely i'm i'm glad we did this i know it took us a little while to kind of get get our diaries yeah, lined up for it but <laughs> we yeah. got there in the end <laughs> <laughs> so but um yeah brilliant i think uh i think it was great i'm really glad we had the call i'm really glad we yeah. you shared what you did i think uh definitely yeah. something i'm taking on board and going to work through regardless yeah. of whether i'm my life is going through a change or not or whatever it might be <laughs> but it's just mm-hmm. imbalance or whatever yeah. i think yeah. it's i think it's good tips to take on anyway yeah so inshallah if you if anybody has any more questions feel free free to drop it in and you know shahina and i will come back and answer those questions and anybody add, wants to add to this discussion you know like for me i'm yeah. a, you know, like okay i i understand hormones but i'm a very new entrepreneur so maybe i might, might have missed some things and you know somebody else may have something really valuable to add so please do feel free to come in and add something and add value to the group really yeah i think so i think so Okay thank you Shana. Okay thank you assalamu alaikum Okay wa alaikum assalam